Good God, crypto traders, what a day. We've got it all. We're covering all the bases here in a couple hours span. As I've been saying constantly, you, when you go from maximum euphoria to fear to euphoria, that's when the players that play this game for a living make the most money off of the people that don't. So there's a lot to check in on here. Let's get right to it. Okay, just to set the stage first thing, I want to empathize knowing a lot of people lost a lot of money today. A lot of people are confused, unsure what to do. I personally had my best trading day in a long time today because oversold bounces are my specialty and I've been all cash for a while waiting for today. I've been waiting for today for two months. So I was ready and prepared. We're going to go through regular technical analysis. We're going to go through what we're watching in the short term, what to expect bigger picture. And then at the end of the video, I'll go back and go over how I traded this bounce on this flush today. And I was live streaming for part of it Certainly very distracting, but it all worked out. So we flushed, again, maximum euphoria. I have been waiting for today to happen for two months, like I said. Did I know when it was gonna happen? Nope. Did I know what price it would happen at? Nope. Did I know how low we would drop? No. The only way that I knew that today would happen eventually was 10 years of trading experience and knowing that maximum euphoria leads to maximum fear very shortly after. And all I got to do, I mean, I could pull up so many examples, but just off the top of my head, TLRY, it happened twice. Look at this short squeeze. We went from 20s to 60. Look at the next two days, absolute collapse. And that was the second time it did it. Look at this move. We went from, th from 21 IPO, hit 300, and then we dropped 60% over a few days. Maximum fear or maximum euphoria, I should say, into maximum fear. The more times you live through this cycle, the better prepared you are for the next time it happens. If this is your first time, chalk it up as a lesson. And then next time around, you are going to be better prepared and can potentially capitalize on it. So the only way that I capitalized on today and made money was because I've seen this happen dozens of times over the last decade. And the goal is to gain that experience and be in that place as well. So at the moment, we have a short squeeze attempt on Coinbase Pro. This move right here is giving Coinbase Pro a two to $3,000 premium against other exchanges. And we're seeing a big influx in volume. We bounced 40% from the low in four hours. After dumping massively, of course, we dropped down to 30,000 psychological. The monthly time frame bounced off EMA 12 support. It's a massive drop. We are now at this point playing the zoom out game. So we changed trends on some shorter term timeframes. I'm now focusing on the four hour. Look at Bitcoin rejecting from the four hour EMA 12. We'll need bear follow through to have conviction on this rejection as we're still in a, four, uh, a 15 minute uptrend at this point. If we lose the 15 minute uptrend, we are looking for a four hour lower high to be set and patient bulls are looking for a four hour higher low. There's still a lot of issues with exchanges out there. There's a lot of issues with exchanges freezing, orders not going through, locking people out. I was locked out for maybe 10 minutes today and fortunately was able to get back in. But there's correlation with the broader market as well. The low of the day, the, the stock market futures were weak all night overnight. That's me entering a little bit of a short position on the financial sector, looking for an hourly lower high there. But we were bearish on stocks overnight all night. The low of the day was hit at about 9.15 a.m. on SPY and QQQ. Bitcoin's low of the day was hit at 9.10 a.m. They coincided together. QQQ has been bouncing the entire morning. Obviously, it's not nearly the same move. It's the same move, just different percentages. So we're looking for an hourly lower high on QQQ. We're looking for a four-hour lower high on Bitcoin. I would be watching the broader market if you are trading cryptocurrency right now because it continues to have impact and correlation. Hourly time frame for Bitcoin, plenty of space for a higher low, but watching for temporary tops to be set and then to trade within the range that we set, this massive range, we're then gonna be watching for a four hour higher low to form. If the bulls can confirm a four hour trend change, the daily oversold bounce will be underway and then we'll zoom out and scout a daily lower high as the most likely scenario. I believe our bottom is in for a while as far as a capitulation bottom. And we would need to drop 25% from here to revisit that 
But people right now are still struggling, or I should say scrambling, to try and get into their exchanges to try and buy some of this dip. I know at least a couple people, and I assume if there's a couple people where that's the case, that there's probably a bunch of people where that's the case. So at this point, if you're looking bearish, I personally would only suggest that the really aggressive bears are scouting a four hour lower high, but the patient bears are waiting for a daily RSI to cool off and waiting for a daily lower high before trying to make a bearish entry. Bears had their time to shine. It's now time to let the bulls shine a bit. So Bitcoin, bigger picture. Are we done? Is that the bull market done for now? I can't say, but I can say that we are likely to trade within the range that we just established between 65,000 and 30,000 for a while. And that can be weeks or months, but that's what I'm anticipating. And overall bigger picture, the chart isn't broken on the monthly time frame, but it is a lot of ground to cover to get back to that all time high. Very interested to see what kind of continued pressure can be put on these shorts. Because on this bounce now, already at this point, anybody that's gone short in the last 15 hours is underwater. And if these bulls can clear 45, 46, then there's going to be a lot of people underwater that have shorted in the last couple of days. But if not, if we reject from the EMA resistance, it won't be much of a short squeeze. And we'll just be watching for that higher low. The dominance chart has my attention. So the four hour time frame is crossing bull, the 12 and 26. If you've been watching, you know I've been talking about that for a while now. And this is the first bull cross since this massive drop started over the last couple months. What is this chart showing me? This chart is showing me that Bitcoin held up better and altcoins dropped faster in terms of percentages. And we knew that that's how this chart would have to bounce. After a certain amount of time, you know, if Tesla news isn't going to lead to Bitcoin bulls piling in, and if, if that headline's not going to do it, it's got to be a market-wide drop and the alts dropping faster. So that's what we have. But now I'm watching to see, do we see the same pattern that we've always seen in this move, which is faster drop and faster bounce for the alts. And that's what we're seeing. Alts dumping faster, alts bouncing faster as well. If we break this high of 45.45, it will be very notable to me as far as follow through and continued shift of focus from altcoins back to Bitcoin. If we don't, it's going to be business as usual and this daily chart won't be doing a whole lot. So we do need to confirm an hourly trend change. If we're going to say, okay, we got the four hour cross, that's different. And now an hourly trend change, as opposed to just a slow fade would make it different as well. Because again, we've seen these big spikes and then it's just a slow fade to give it all back. ETH USD, massive drop. If you watch the live stream from last week, we were talking during this pullback and a lot of people were stressing out at the size of the pullback. And I said, this pullback is nothing. If you were here for 2017, you know that a real pullback takes out multiple weeks of bull action. And that's what today is showing us with that flush over leveraged longs, just complete liquidation, stop losses triggering, bears making their big money, and then the quick flip where the order books are completely cleared out. So there's your V-shaped bounce. Bigger picture, weekly, still in an uptrend. Four hour, scouting a lower high, EMA 12 resistance approaching, and still a 15 minute uptrend at this point, looking towards 3000 psychological. And nice, just slow, steady buying of this flush. Four hour trend changes needed for daily oversold bounce in Bitcoin to see any follow through. ETH BTC, little daily lower high and lower low, weekly consolidation underway. And again, how that dominance chart reacts here into tonight is going to be key for me. An hourly trend change will make me focus more on Bitcoin than I have in months and less on ETH than I have in months. I did play ETH on this bounce and it went well, but that will change if bulls on the dominance chart and I just refer to them as bulls, but if the dominance chart can confirm that follow through. LTC USD, big flush. Everybody's doing the same thing, just to different magnitudes. And correlations pick up during times of fear and volatility. And it's just some names are bouncing less, some names are bouncing more. And we can see Litecoin is still a four hour inside bar, whereas Bitcoin and ETH broke the high of the last four hour candle. So that's a pretty notable difference between the two. 
as far as I'm concerned, a lot of these charts, you know, I look at Litecoin and say, well, are we still in a weekly uptrend or, or what, what do I make of this? For me, it's just focus in on the shorter term timeframes. The four hour trend change, if we get it, we zoom out for the daily lower high. For me, the zoom out game is where I'm finding clarity in the short term. And if we continue to recover and then we change the daily trend, then that will be extremely notable to us that this capitulation bottom has led to a full recovery on some of these pretty key timeframes. But Litecoin right now, the four hour bounce, a little bit less significant. And looking at the BTC pairing, we can see why, because the four hour bounce has not started there. And again, we're right back to the spotlight. You wanna see your coin have a BTC pairing that is in an uptrend and directly correlating. If I'm looking at a coin and it just changed its four hour trend bullish, the strongest altcoins will see their BTC pairings change the four hour trend bullish at the same time. And Litecoin is not doing that. It's not in the spotlight. XRP, love it or hate it, I don't care. It is one of the stronger coins and it has our attention, absolutely. We held weekly support. You're not gonna find many altcoins that were this close to breaking weekly support and double bottomed at that level. Four hour time frame. we're watching for a lower high on this bounce. If the bulls regain the four hour trend from here, that'll be a very impressive hold of that weekly support. And the Bitcoin pairing is still a daily uptrend. It is in the spotlight and it has been for a bit. Let's see if that can continue. I view today as just a big shaking up, and I use this analogy with stocks, shaking up of the snow globe. And now we're watching where the flakes settle. Is it settling towards Bitcoin and dominance of Bitcoin? Is it going back to the stronger altcoins? Is it going to defy names? Is it going to XRP? That's what we're watching for. How does it settle with this massive shakeup in volatility? Matic has been a big time performer recently. The hourly bounce was massive, 100% bounce in an hour. If you are not taking profit, take profit when you're seeing those kinds of gains that quickly. Hourly high or low, and the bulls need to break 234 for an hourly confirmed trend change. I like the hourly for clarity on Matic. I don't like the hourly for clarity on most of the other coins that we just looked at. BTC pairing, hourly lower high. Now we're scouting a higher low. Clear equilibrium setup with a very massive range. Watching for it to likely continue to tighten up for a while into tonight, potentially into tomorrow. And the direction that this breaks is going to have significant implications as to whether or not Matic remains in the daily spotlight. ADA, USDT, another massive bounce, massive drop. You know, bounce, we dropped on a lot of these altcoins 60% from the all-time high, and that was just a few days ago. So liquidity just evaporates. 59% drop from four days ago, but 81% bounce, which is again why I have missed out on upside the last six weeks and been patiently waiting in cash because I was not going to be holding positions when this happened. Four hour time frame, nice follow through, just looking for a lower high, EMA 12 resistance underway, but again, tons of space for four hour higher lows. And I do believe that there's a good number of bulls out there that will be looking to buy four hour higher lows once we consolidate. ADA BTC, that is a beautiful bounce, certainly staying in the spotlight. Four hour follow through. This is the strongest BTC pairing that we've looked at so far. Keep an eye on ADA for that reason. Let's see if the four hour charts remain correlated between the US dollar and BTC pairings to stay in the spotlight. Link, another one that dropped 60% from the all time high just a week and a half ago. Four hour bounce does not have follow through yet. When we get it, we'll be scouting a lower high. So again, just looking at Link and ADA, there are massive differences in how this bounce is currently playing out. Just leader versus laggard. 60% bounce, 50, 60% bounce versus 100% bounce, or 80% bounce, I should say. 50 versus 80. Link BTC, four hour time frame, doing the same thing. So weakly correlated as opposed to strongly correlated. So out of this list, I like the XRP weekly support on the US dollar pairing, and the BTC pairing is holding on as well, and ADA is showing us the most strength out of these names. I'm sure there's other altcoins that are having really significant bounces as well. These are the names that I personally am looking at right now. So bigger picture, again, I, I have no idea. I am not a predictionary. I don't predict. I'm not here to predict what Bitcoin is going to do. I have no idea what the price of Bitcoin will be in two weeks from now. 
I react. I see massive euphoria. I react to it. I see massive fear and capitulation. I react to it. And then I observe. How much bounce follow through do we get? Do we confirm trend changes on the four hour time frame? How much space do we have to set up a daily trend change? What is the media narrative at that time? These are all things that help me trade. But again, I, I have no idea. No idea. So how did I play this bounce? Going at the moment right now, I'm back to all cash. And again, this was the kind of day where in the first 18 days of trading for May, I made X dollars trading crypto. And today in less than two hours, I made 4X. So this was the time to shine that I've been waiting for. And I was fortunate to, I did it, I played two ways. I did have scale in orders for extreme conditions, but my money was made on market orders when things got extreme. My style of playing bounces, my aggressiveness as a bull directly matches the aggressiveness of the bears. If we are stair stepping down on the five minute time frame, I am not trading aggressively because RSI levels are cooling off on shorter term time frames and it opens up the door for another leg down. If we are flushing and exchanges are starting to flash and Coinbase, or I should say trading view, is starting to glitch and miss volume data and see gaps on the chart, that's when I know we're in extreme fear. And that's when I get real aggressive with my buying. The only thing there is this much separated me from a break even day and a month maker day. And the reason was right here because I played this bounce aggressively as well. This dump was significant. And I did the same thing with scaling in a couple orders, but then market buying when I saw some signs of a short-term climax bottom. And again, what I'm doing is I'm watching the ETH chart here. I've got my orders that I'm trading on. And then I've got Bitcoin on the other screen. I'm just staring at two, keeping it nice and simple, staring at these two. And I can see that ETH BTC is dumping. And I know that when we bounce, we will likely see the BTC pairing bounce as well and bigger gains on Ethereum. If you're holding an altcoin during that dump, it is extremely painful. If you're buying near the bottom, that's when it pays off to be in the altcoin because that's when the BTC pairings go from real bearish to bullish. So this was a clue as well. The fact that the ETH BTC pairing did not bounce significantly on this bounce was a clue that this may not be the bottom. I thought this was our bottom. The only reason I did not get burned significantly because at this point in time, after I market bought a couple orders down here, I was maybe 75% in position, 20% cash after being 90 to 95% cash for the last six weeks. Again, I left money on the table for a professional trader. The amount of money that I made on Ethereum on the way up, I should have made more. But knowing this was coming, I chose the conservative versus aggressive approach. But on ETH, I scaled out a good bit on this bounce. If you give me a 15% bounce in less than a half an hour, I am absolutely going to take profit. If you are playing these oversold bounces, you need to scale out into these bounces. Because again, if, you are, if I was in 80% and then we dropped down here, I would fill the last of my cash. I would hope and pray that we don't collapse into oblivion. And then I would exit break even on this bounce. So it was exiting significant. And that's just a lack of greed. Again, you give me 15%. I'm, I want to establish a position for a Bitcoin daily oversold bounce. But if you give me those significant gains that quickly, I have to take some profit. And again, I give the analogy of bullets and ammo where my orders scaling in or my market orders are using up my bullets when I'm using up my cash. And this is me getting ammo back by selling into that strength. And at that point in time, my break even was uh, 2.7K because I had one entry that was way too early. It was only 5% position, but I was still in a position from 3.3K on ETH. I should have stopped out on that. That was dumb on my part, definitely a mistake. But after playing this bounce, I had an average of 2.7K because of that order. And then back to 80% cash and ready to let it rip on this massive drop. What I was looking for on this massive drop was obviously BTC was in free fall. And I liked the 2000 break on ETH because again, 
Oftentimes you see a climax top or climax bottom with a break of key psychological levels. You got a big wall of support on 2000. You flush through that. That triggers any remaining stops and that's shorts getting any remaining fills. And once the bears use up that strength to get through the wall, just imagine a bear running, you know, miles and it's running and it's running and it's clearing hurdles. It's busting through, you know, shrubs on this trek. And those are support lines that it's busting through. And now it's getting tired and exhausted. It's been running for all day. And we get to this big barrier of shrubs and trees. And with its last energy, it busts through. And then it just collapses. It's done. That's all it's got. And that's the scenario with the bears, the last flush. And then it's only shorts covering and only bulls buying and a very thin order book. So I was very fortunate to number one, have Coinbase working you know, I was logged out of Coinbase and they wouldn't let me in during this point in time. My live stream started at 9 a.m. I wish I could have called in sick, but people would have known that I was a liar. And I got back in right in time to buy the break of 2000. So I had some orders scaled in. I had, again, I've got, let's say 20% cash, 2.7K average. I then scale in some at 2680, 2580, 2480. And then I've got 50% cash left and that's market order cash. That's me saying, okay, scaling it too early. I am waiting now until I see signs of a climax bottom and then I'm just going aggressive. And actually I didn't realize how close I was to nearly. I got filled with a market order for a, a decent sized position at 1901 and change. I didn't realize how close that was to the low and that was a market order. And then the, the biggest order that I made today was 1955 market order is where I filled. And those two orders are what dropped my average from at that point, probably, you know, 2.5. And that dropped it down to maybe 2.3, 2.2s, which allowed for the big win on the follow through. So again, it's, it's just teetering on that line. You know, if, if I am locked out and I don't get those market orders under 2000, my average is 2.7 and I get a break even day. So it's just a, a hair thin of all these little, scenarios that can be for or against you and completely dictate how the trade works out. And no stop losses for me. At this point in time, it's either capitulation, you know, low or cryptocurrency collapses and exchanges blow up and, you know, I lose maybe half of my year's crypto profits would have been worst case scenario because I'm not using a stop loss in that scenario. I didn't use all my cash. I used maybe 85, 90% of my cash and then just scaled out, you know, scaled out a little bit at five minute EMA, scaled out a little bit when Bitcoin hit the 15 minute EMA 12, and I am now all out at this point. If it keeps going, great. My anti-FOMO is my long-term no touch position. But again, these gains this fast, I'm locking it in every time. And now I'm all cash and I can buy four hour higher lows if I want. And I will be patiently waiting for four hour consolidation if I'm going to look to do anything from here. I don't think if there's anything that I missed as far as the style of trading. I don't know how in the world I got filled in the 1901s. I'm going to have to double check exactly what that price was. Let's do that real quick. Laggy exchange. And again, so many people with so many issues on their exchanges today. Lowest fill, 1901.62. And they fill me a solid chunk there. 1902.04, 1902.16. So 1901s up to 1904s is where they filled my best market buy. All right, feel free to ask any questions by all means. And we'll see what kind of recovery we get. Bitcoin dominance chart, hourly trend change or business as usual. If we do not see a higher high, it's business as usual for alts recovering faster. Bitcoin four hour EMA 12 resistance. If we lose the 15 minute uptrend, the four hour lower high is likely set and bulls will be scouting four hour higher lows 
with stops under the low. If we break the lows of today, massive red flag for the cryptocurrency space as a whole. That needs to be our capitulation low for all of May and June. If it's not, our top is likely set for a while, a long while. All right, do good things. And again, if you had a losing experience today, it is tuition. I promise I have lost thousands of times. And you learn the lessons and you apply them to next time. And the lessons from 2017 are absolutely making me money in 2021. And there's a lot of people where that is the case. And if this is your first cycle, we're going to see another one, whether it's in crypto or whatever massive stock euphoria or new sector or anti-gravity technology, stocks start popping up in 10 years. This game has a lot of opportunity. You just have to ensure that you don't get liquidated and you can stay in this game for the long term to be able to capitalize on these lessons that you are learning in the meantime. See ya.